What's going on everyone, Juan Valdez here. I hope you guys are having an excellent day so far. So today in this video, I wanted to cover what products you should actually go after and try to sell right now for quarter four. As you guys know, it is the busiest time of the year. And of course, you wanna make sure you're actually taking the time to do the right kind of research and you're actually going off of data when you're deciding on what products you're actually gonna to decide to test around the holiday season. But I put together some things I wanted to kind of cover here. As you guys are following me along, I wanted to you know, have you guys understand how me and my business partner decide on what kind of products we should go after when it comes to quarter four, right? Because again, quarter four, it's one of the most or it is actually the busiest time of the year. And so you wanna make sure that you're actually approaching quarter four with the right kind of strategy. So what you can actually do is you can actually take the time to research what kind of products were sold the most of on the Shopify platform last year, right? So one of the things I actually have pulled up here is a graph that came directly from shopify.com showing the different categories and the different products and how old, right? So if you look right here, it's showing top selling items around the world. It looks like apparel by far dominated in this space, right? So it looks like apparel, there was a total of 1.4 million total items of apparel purchased last year around, this is specifically for quarter four, by the way, right around the holiday season, only for that season, right? Not even including the rest of the year. And so you can see right here that apparel absolutely crushed it last year. The next one in line is you have accessories, you know, watches, bracelets, things like that almost a million items within the accessory space that were sold last year. You then have housewares, half a million items total sold uh, around the holiday season. You then have shoes, uh, makeup, electronics, food, and games. And so after seeing these you know, numbers and these statistics, well, that can give you a much better idea of what kind of product you should even bother to you know, research and potentially even try to sell, right? Because if you can go based on data rather than just trying to guess what products you should actually test, well, that's a much better bet. I personally love to go based on research more than anything else, right? I don't like to do too much of like gut instinct or like I think this will sell. I already made that huge mistake when I first got started in e-commerce. So hopefully for you guys, you're, I'm able to help you guys avoid making that same mistake that I made of, you know, trying to sell things that I'm interested in, right? Because in reality, usually the products that you're interested in aren't gonna be the products that sell almost all the time, right? You guys may have heard that before and it's true. Even up to date with some of the products that we're selling like right now, honestly, it's products that we're not really interested at all, like absolutely zero interest in it. So. Uh, that's just part of the game but again we're not in the business of some things that we like we're in the business of making money right obviously you guys have been following me and my channel and everything we do because you guys are trying to learn how to make money online right how to have your own profitable e-commerce business after pulling up this graph actually when i once i saw it i knew it was like a complete game changer because i knew it was going to help prepare me for the previous year and the holiday season and so using this is like literally my guide coming into quarter four as to how I'm deciding on what products we're actually gonna go after. And so this is a huge resource right here. Go ahead and screenshot this and save it if you guys want. However best you think, you know, you'll remember some of the products that, you know, we got the insight on based on last year's statistics. The next thing you wanna do is take some time to actually go through these categories and research different products within them, right? Research different products in the accessory niche or in the space, different products in the houseware space, right? Like home goods, different products within shoes. Now shoes, I personally haven't seen too many people sell like, you know, shoes, at least drop ship. Just because I feel like with shoes, people are a little bit picky, but who knows, right? You can still go in there and research and see if there's anything that you can market to potential customers. Now, uh, makeup is huge. I know that for a fact, there's a lot of people that crush it with makeup, electronics, is huge, there's so many different products in the electronic space. You then have food, food you probably can't drop ship, so you probably don't wanna go with food. Uh, but games, I know games is huge. Actually, I was doing some research and I've seen a couple different stores that are doing super well selling gaming products. Because gaming, one of the things that is huge around that time of the year is like for gifts and holidays, you know, people wanted to get video games like PlayStation 4s, Xboxes, all these different gaming consoles, right? I know for me, one of the things I would look forward to the most when it came to the holiday season is to see like what I'm getting next, right? When I was just growing up, like what kind of games I can get, what kind of gaming consoles. Now I don't play as much. I used to play Fortnite a little bit, but honestly, Fortnite is pretty hard. After trying it out, like I honestly kind of gave up on it. It takes a lot of time to kind of learn and master like how to build and all that. But um, I know people that were crushing it, selling like I think gaming controls it was and gaming keyboards. And so it's a huge opportunity within that space as well. Now, 
Now, the next thing you want to do is once you're researching these products, my business partner Samir and I have narrowed it down. We came and put together what's called what we call personally the profitable product index, right? The triple P. And the way we actually came up with this profitable product index is the products that we've sold a ton of, right? That have done well in the past and that are currently doing well. What do they all have in common? And so we took some time to research and we narrowed it down to three things that all products that have done well at whatever point in time have in common, right? The first thing that we kind of consider when we're looking at different products to test is does this product solve a problem? One of the things you guys always want to look for is products that literally solve a problem because there will always be demand for products that solve a problem, right? For example, one of the perfect examples of one of the first products that did really, really well when it comes down to actually solving a problem is like the fidget spinners, right? One of the main problems that it was solving is for people that had ADHD and couldn't stay still and couldn't focus. Well, it was helping them able to actually pay attention and focus and take away the distractions that they had by literally having this little fidget spinner in their hand, right? So that's just one example of one problem solving product. Another problem solving product is like the charcoal toothpaste. Some of you guys may have seen that actually when it actually took off that was like all over the internet like everybody was trying to sell that and what does that product solve or what problem does that product solve well it helps brighten your teeth when people represent themselves they want to be they want to be represented in a clean and obviously professional manner usually like we obviously want to look good we want our teeth to look good and so that helps with an insecurity right that's exactly what it does it solves it up the problem of having that insecurity of not having your teeth be uh, completely white, right? If you have yellow teeth, that helps out. And so that's the first P, right? So when we're thinking about any products, we think about, does this product solve a problem? The next P that we think about is, does this product fall into a specific passion, right? Is there a passion connected to this product? The reason why we look for passionate products is because once you find a specific products that people have a strong passion tied to, well, those products are gonna be completely game changer. For example, some of you guys, you may have seen when uh, there was like these crazy looking wolf mugs that like completely blew up in the internet and were like all over. The reason why that wolf mug, even though you personally may not be interested in it, there are other people that actually are, right? There are people that are super passionate about wolf right obviously again like you're not but that doesn't mean that you can't sell this product that other people are so passionate about and so that's a perfect example of a product that there's a strong passion connected to and that's why it did super well now there are many different products that crushed it based on passions and you know for example there's like a ton of different cat products that did really well there was like these 3d cat socks actually that there was a good amount of time where like a lot of people were trying to promote and sell this product and the reason why it did well is because again people love cats like nobody would really love like a regular sock but now if you have a cat design like specific cat designs on a sock well now it's going to make that sock be an actual product that people want that's just the second p just a quick example once you guys start to narrow down profitable product index this is actually what my business partner samir and i teach inside of our ios method masterclass. Uh, we actually put together a free case study showing you guys how we use this actual profitable product index and narrow down products and also use it within your business, right? So there's gonna be a link down below in the description that you guys can check out. It's a completely free case study. It's gonna show you guys how you can use a profitable product index in your business. And I'm telling you guys, it's a game changer. The last P in the profitable product index is, is it a perishable product, right? Meaning a product that you need more than one of. Once we were doing some thinking, right? There were a lot of different products that did really well that really took off and like, you know, a lot of people made a ton of money with and they were perishable products, right? And for a quick example, the charcoal toothpaste is actually a product. It's actually a unique product in this example because it falls under two categories. And there's a great thing about products that fall under two or more categories. The reason why the charcoal toothpaste is a perishable product is because you need more than one of the container that the, the charcoal toothpaste comes in, right? You can't keep your teeth white forever with just one tub of the little thing that the charcoal toothpaste came in, right? You need more than one of. Once you have a perishable product that people are showing tons of interest in, well, that's a great product to actually go after as well because that means that they automatically need to buy more than one of that product right off the jump. So right away, you're already increasing your average order value and you're already making more sales per customer than any other product. Not every single product is gonna be like this. Another example of a perishable product that did really well is these push-up bras, right? Some of you guys that are watching, you may have seen those around before and heard of other people selling those. Well, that product actually fell into two categories, right? It fell under the problem solving because I guess it helped women like bring their breasts together and uh, have a better apparel and it helped cover an insecurity. So obviously, it's 
solves a problem that they have for sure. And so that's one, but it's also a perishable product because that product in particular, you can only get three to four uses. And then after that, you need to get a new one, right? Because I guess the, the adhesive on it runs out. And so that's a perfect product that did really well because usually when people came in to buy that product, based on what I've seen, they usually came in and bought more than one of all the time. Like I would say on average, the average cart value for this specific product was like two to three, almost every single person that purchased this specific product from almost everybody, right? because they knew that they would need more than one of this product because they, were, they weren't gonna be able to keep using it for long. And so that's the profitable product index and just a quick understanding, just to have you guys kind of understand how we do product research and how you guys can use the same system that we kind of use to do product research yourselves. We have realized, and if you guys start to think about any product that has done well in the you know e-commerce and drop shipping space, and you think about, well, did this product solve a problem? Was it a passionate product or was it a perishable product? I guarantee you guys 100% that any product that did well or is doing well right now is a product that falls under those categories, right? Now, the last example, I know you guys probably seen this product, right? It was like the ab stimulator one, the one that I guess it helps get you ripped abs, right? Even though like, let's be real, I don't, I don't really think that a product like that can probably help with that. I don't know that I never tried it, but it honestly crushed it, right? And I know people that are even up to date still crushing it with that product. This is super important because when you're doing research for products to sell in quarter four, you wanna make sure that you're taking the time to do the right kind of research, right? Like you're taking the time to see if these products are even gonna be worth going after. And if they have this effect, one of the good things is also, once you have this uh, system, the profitable product index, once you start using it, you're gonna see how beneficial it is. But also what helps is if you can start to look for products that have that fall under more than one of the categories. That is also a game changer because what happens is once you have a product like the push-up bra that solves a problem and is perishable product, well, that's even better because now when the per person comes in to get this product, this problem solved, they also need more than one of the product, which means that automatically your average order value goes through the roof and the amount of sales you make per customer goes up as well. So that's just a quick example for with like a problem solving product and like a perishable product. You always wanna to try to have the product fall at least under one category, but if you can have it fall under two or maybe even all three, well, that's even better almost all the time. I hope you guys end up implementing what you learned from this module, this video actually, because I know that for a fact, this will help you guys out. And one of the last things I wanted to talk about is having a plan for after quarter four, right? Because I don't wanna just make videos like hyping up quarter four, how you should get into drop shipping and come in, test all these products, make money and like only make money for quarter four and then just like, give up drop shipping, right? Just like cash out and leave, right? Like a, a literally a get rich quick scheme. I don't want you guys to think that this is how I'm positioning, you know, this opportunity of obviously quarter four, one of the busiest times of the year. What you guys actually wanna do and the mindset you wanna have when coming into quarter four is, you wanna obviously do the research, have your store set up, learn how it all works, all that great stuff. What you also wanna do is have a plan for after, right? So when it comes to e-commerce, the ultimate goal isn't to like drop ship products, other people's products forever, right? You eventually, like if you wanna make like real money in e-commerce, like some of the top e-commerce guys are doing is they brand their own products and they build like these huge brands around these products. And the reason why is because you can make more profits off of branded products rather than unbranded products. So one of the things you guys wanna do as you're testing all these different products and researching and doing all that work, you wanna make sure that once you narrow down and you find products that sell really well, once you get results of some of these products, you consider making a brand around these products, right? Because that's where you will really make money. I guarantee you guys, like when I first got started in e-commerce, um, I ended up meeting this guy that was selling the exact same products as I was literally the exact same products I was selling. And I was selling them for around like 12 to $15. And this guy, because he had established a brand, he was able to actually sell the same product for six to seven times the amount. He was selling them the same exact product I was selling for like 60 to $70. And the reason why he was able to do that is because he had this brand. And so that's really the power behind having a brand. Keep the products that end up working for you in mind and consider building brands on these products because that's how you will generate not only higher profits, but longer term profits as well. Because there's no point of just doing really well with these products in one quarter. Like again, there's gonna be some products that only do well within the holiday season in quarter four, but there's gonna be products that you guys can take that you can also sell throughout the whole year and can literally be like what you focus on throughout the year. If you can narrow down and build a brand around a specific product that there's somewhat interest throughout the whole year, and it's a product that falls into the th triple P's and that people can actually use and benefit from throughout the year, 
Well, now you're gonna go from trying to only, only drop ship other people's products to focusing on your own products and building this brand that's, again, gonna be a lot more long-term, is gonna benefit you a lot more than just trying to always consistently find like the newest, hottest, and trendiest products, right? Again, it's all about working smart and hard. Uh, you wanna do both. And that's one of the strategies that we're planning on implementing because of course we understand the, the concept of, you know, branding and, you know, really building sustainable businesses using branding. And so um, that's pretty much it for this video. I don't want to bore you guys. I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you dropped a like on this video. If you guys have questions about anything that I went over, I mean anything, drop it in the comments below. I'll get back to you guys and uh, make sure you guys turn on post notifications as well. That way you guys get reminded every time I drop a new video. And if you haven't already, make sure you join the VFAM, smash that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video. And of course, if you guys wanna see the free case study that me and my business partner put together, make sure you check out the link down in the description. Again, it's an absolutely free case study and it's gonna show you guys how you can use a profitable product index, which is what we use in our business to do product research. So, see you guys in the next video. Peace.